welcome to section 8, Model Evaluation and Selection. In this section, we are going to take a look at preparing data, cleaning, imputing, and dealing with categorical variables. We will learn about performance metrics, the confusion matrix, and F1 score. We will learn how to split the data into training and test sets, do cross-validation, and parameter tuning using grid search. The goal is to reach the best model that does not overfit the training data and will likely be the best performer on auto-sample data as well. Finally, we will wrap up the series. The first video, we will learn about pre-processing data for machine learning. How to deal with categorical variables. So in the regression, as you remember, the goal was to correctly predict the continuous variable. Here the categorical variables I show as a blue arrows and the goal was to fit a regression line. In classification, the goal was to identify the best decision boundary so as to separate the classes from each other. Now, how do we deal with categorical variables? We create so-called dummy or indicator variables, and that's done in pandas with the get dummies method. What it does, it takes a variable, and based on the number of unique values that variable has, new variables are created for each unique value. Okay, in this case, Smoker has two unique values, no and yes, and two variables are created, no and yes. And these are binary variables. They have the values of 1 and 0. They get 1 for the corresponding row if that new variable was present as a value in the original variable, meaning the smoker no, since the first row is a no here, it gets the value of 1, and the smoker yes gets 0. And it continues like this. If there are three variables, three unique values for the day variable, then three new variables will be created. And then the same idea as before, it will have a 1 for the corresponding row if it's present in the original variable, okay? So as you can see, we get new variables with ones and zeros. Now the drop first, what is that? Well, that will drop one column to prevent linear dependence, and that's used when uh, to prevent singular matrix error in models which depend on inverse matrix calculations. So that's like hiding the first column here. One hat encoding. First, label encoding is performed to convert object variables or categorical variables into integer variables. A discrete integer for each category starting from zero is created to replace the values. So for example, you can see here in this x1 variable, 3 becomes 0 and the largest value 22 becomes 3. Okay, so it creates a discrete integer variable. Now, one hat encoding creates dummy variables or indicator variables and it can only be applied onto integer columns. So first you have to have an integer or numeric column and then you can apply one hat encoder to create binary indicator variables. Now here all binary columns are preserved and it's best to use this when you have methods that apply regularization or do not solely depend on inverse matrices, okay? So data pre-processing, imputing missing data with the mean or the most frequent value or the median value. And this is how it is done in sklearn. We can normalize the data. For example, standard scalar we can apply and this is how it is done here. Creating polynomial features. We can create, for example, second order polynomial features from our data to create new features. And these are all part of pre-processing library within sklearn. So with that said, let's go to coding. Now here, since the coding is too long and we will do quite a lot of things here, I have pre-coded for you and we will run these together and see the results. So we will say import numpy as mp, import pandas as pd, seaborn and matplotlib as usual. We will also set different options for numpy. This is to prevent numeric variables being shown in scientific terms, okay? And the data we're going to use is from the UCI machine learning repository, the heart disease data set. You can download it from there and analyze it. You can read about it to get more insight into the data. These are the column names. Since the data does not come with column names, we are going to provide it into our pdread CSV function. And here I provide the link directly to the data without downloading it. This is also another way to work with data in pandas. So then we were checking the head of this data so we can see the column names here. And the last column is our prediction column. It shows whether a person has the disease or not. Now df.info, we are seeing we have 303 rows and 14 columns. All of them are float except these two, ca and tel, and the last column is integer column. Now ca and tel, when I look here, it looks like it's numeric. However, it says object here, so there might be down somewhere a problem with either a letter being entered 
or something happening there. So we will check that soon. So df.shape shows the same information, 303 rows and 14 columns. If you check the df.num.unique, we are seeing the unique values within this num column and it's 02134. Now in the definition of the data set, it says that this column shows whether a person has the disease or not. And it says we are, can convert this to zero or one. So that's what we are doing here. We are using the mpware function and we are comparing that the column to a zero value. And if it is zero, we are keeping a zero. If it is not, we are converting it to one. So this way, after doing this, we only have zero or one as our unique values. DF.CA and DF.TAL, when we check the unique values, we see there is a question mark here. And that's the problem. That's basically a missing value. And they used a question mark to represent the missing value. So we are going to convert that missing value into this question mark. We are convert that into a missing NAN value, NP.NAN, NAN of NumPy. And we are using in place true, make the change effective in the data set directly. Now, once we do that, check the CA column. We see that indeed we don't have the question mark anymore. We have the NAN value here, right? However, the variable is still a string type, an object type. So we need to use this type method to convert it into a float type. Okay, now we will have a float of CA. So the CA values are now float values. As you can see, it doesn't have this quote around it. Okay, so if you check DF info again, we see that we have 299 values in CA and 301 values in TAL. So df.info recognizes this NAND saying it's a missing value. And we know that four missing values are in CA and two missing values are in the tal column. We can also check this with this method here, is null and sum. We can see that there's four and two respectively. Now here I use a pair grid to construct a pairwise comparison graph basically. And on the diagonal, you can see the kernel density graphs. And on the upper and lower parts, you can see scatter plots. Now I advise you that you should use visualization and more than this definitely to gain insight into your data because that will help you in your data analysis process a lot to understand the relationship between features and output and whatnot. Okay, visualization is a very important step. Okay, so I continue. By the way, these two colors are the num column, zero or one, you know, whether the person has the disease or not. So you see a very interesting behavior here that one is increasing and the other is decreasing and it's vice versa. So those same kind of thing happening here as well in these two variables. So it's a good thing to check these variables. Okay, so here we are going to create our X matrix, the input data in the Y output variable. So by dropping the num variable from the data set, we make that the X matrix in the Y is our output, the prediction that we're going to make. So it's a df.num column, the variable. Now we will import the train test split. We are going to separate this x and y into train and test data. So we are going to assume that we only have access to train part of this. So this x train and y train, and we do not know about the x test and y test that will be given to us at the end after we have developed the machine learning model. And then after we have made predictions, and basically on train set and developed our model, we will be given the test set. We will make predictions on it and compare the test set and see how well we are doing. Okay, so that's the idea here. So we will now remove the NAN, the missing values. So for that, we are going to import from the pre-processing, the imputer. Its strategy we'll be using is most frequent. We are going to apply this onto X train for both these two columns, right? For both the CA and TAL column, we are going to do the same thing. One of them was categorical and one of them is not based on the definition provided on the website. But based on my judgment, it's best to use most frequent for both of them. Since the unique values we checked, as you remember here, the unique values, let's go back. The unique values, CA unique and TAL unique, they seem to be like discrete value type. Okay, so that's why it's best to use most frequent. So with that, we fit this imputer onto the train data. So it learns the most frequently happening values in each column of that data. And then we transform our train and test data. And then we save it back to train and test data sets. Okay. Next, we will do one hot encoding. 
we are importing the one at encoder from the pre-processing of sklearn. We are checking the DF columns here. The reason is we are going to provide this one at encoder with the categorical features that we want it to process and create indicator variables out of them. So we will saying df.columns.is in. So these four columns are categorical variables based on again the definition from the website. And we are not including the last one because the last one is the num column, which is our prediction column. So we are saying this mask will be a true or false numpy array. We are going to give this here as mask to the one not encoder, and then we are going to fit and transform. So this is like the same kind of pattern. Instantiate, fit, and then transform the data. So we are transforming train and test data, and we create xtrain2 and xtest2. If you check the first row of xtrain2, we see that our new variables have been created, and we see a lot of 0 and 1s here. And the shape has also changed because since we have created new features, the number of columns has increased from 14 minus 1, you know, the num column was dropped, so 13 to 22.